good morning. So right now I am in line at Starbucks. So right now it's like 11.30. I don't have class till one. So right now I'm picking up something to eat. I made my coffee at home because I have like perfected my own like caramel iced coffee and Starbucks is trash compared to it. I never thought I would say this because I love Starbucks, but my coffee is like heaven and my coffee is perfect. But like I was saying, um, so I kind of get to school early. So I was thinking I could kind of chit chat with you guys. But yeah, right now I'm getting something to eat because my class is five hours long um, and I'm always starving. So I'm just gonna get like a breakfast sandwich. I'm probably gonna get like a turkey bacon sandwich or something. I know it's not really morning, it's 11.30, but I haven't had breakfast yet. So I'm in the mood for a little breakfast sandwich, a little sandwich. Hi, can I get the double smoked bacon cheddar and egg? I still have one left. Okay. Because I do have one left. Okay, perfect. Anything else? Fabia? It's going to be 5.36. Thank you. Oh my god. I'm slime moving quick. Thanks. Hey guys, so I just pulled up to school. Um, it only took me oh, 20 minutes to get here, but thankfully I found parking space. There's nothing better than like getting into school and like as soon as you turn in to look for parking, you find parking and it's closer to the front. So, so I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about what you should expect for from clinical. So I thought that that was something that I know that when before I started nursing school, I was really curious about, you know, and you kind of wonder like what you're going to do in clinical and all that. So I'm here to talk about that. So first semester of nursing school. So when I first started, I was extremely nervous, um, obviously, to start clinical because you're in the hospital, you're dealing with patients and all that. And I kind of didn't know what to expect. So let me tell you what you're going to expect. So whenever you start clinicals, you're gonna have, it's literally gonna be a class. So it's gonna be on your schedule as a class and you're all gonna show up. So at least my clinicals, I think there are clinicals that are at night, but our clinicals are usually from like 6.30 to 3.30, so it's about eight hours. So we had to be at the hospital in our um, conference room at 6.30. So we meet and we kind of gather, you know, our teacher would kind of tell us, I don't know how every clinical teacher is, like our clinical teacher now just kind of sets us loose, but it could be because Obviously, we're not first semester nursing students anymore. But yeah, so you're gonna meet up with your teacher and she's kinda gonna give you a schedule of what you're gonna do. So in foundations, you have like head to toe checkoffs, you have, um, so our vitals checkoffs was like taking blood pressures, um, counting our pulse and stuff and counting breaths. So we would test each other on our classmates. So our clinical teacher would, you know, we would each grab someone's hand and we would both count pulses and you had to get the same number as obviously our clinical instructor for you to pass. And it had to be, I think, within like three beats. And then for blood pressure, you had to take one of our classmates, we got put into pairs and you had to take your classmates blood pressure, write it down, and then you would go to your clinical instructor and she would test, you know, their blood pressure. And it had to be, I think for blood pressure, it had to be within six, um, within six, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm not too sure on that, but yeah, so that's what we would do. What other checkoffs did we have? So yeah, we had to do a head to toe. So the first time we did our head to toe, we got to practice it in school in our um, skills lab. So you got to do it on a mannequin and you had to assess from obviously head to toe, um, checking the skin, you know, checking the sclera, check, checking the conjuvitis, checking the oral mucosa, the ears, um, checking for any skin breakdown. And you have to look for like pressure ulcer, um, formation and stuff and some of, our, some of our mannequins did have some pressure ulcer formation and um so yeah you had to assess like every part of the body um which is what nurses do at the hospital they do head to touch up but they we kind of learn it excessively like we kind of learned it like over the top and when you go to the hospital it's not as over the top but it kind of depends on your patients of course because if you have a patient that's getting up and walking around obviously you don't need to check their butt or their parts or anything and look for skin breakdown and look for anything specific because they can get up and shower themselves and they don't want you all up in their business they could just be here for a knee replacement you know what i mean 
So it kind of depends, but we're obviously learning like in depth head to toes because um, we could have a patient that is completely bedridden and maybe they, you know what I mean? Like they're completely bedridden, they're, they're elderly and you have to check every part of their body, make sure they're doing okay because obviously if they're laying in bed all day and they don't get up or they're elderly and they don't know that they need to move around and all, they can start, start having skin breakdown on their body since you're literally laying on your bed all day for hours on end, you're gonna start getting skin breakdown because you're constantly having pressure, especially on bony prominence. The first sign, which is stage one pressure ulcer, is like redness. So if we continuously are assessing our patients and we see redness, we can actually prevent them from getting a pressure ulcer by turning them or you know sticking a pillow on you know one side of their bum so that they can you know put more pressure on the other side and then you flip them over but you want to turn them we learn you want to turn your patients every two hours um but yeah so that's kind of what we do so we do the head to toe but what you're going to do in clinical is going to be more picking a patient so what we had to do is the night before our clinical day, so we had clinicals on Wednesdays, so Tuesday nights, or Tuesday after our classes, we had a class on Tuesdays, we would go to the hospital, log into the computer, because we had computer access, and we had to pick a patient that was in the hospital and write down all their information. So we had to write down their labs, we had to write down what they're here for, their chief complaint, everything that you can write down about the patient that is in the chart, you need to write it down. So you write down their medications, you write down what they're here for, you know, you write down everything. And that kind of takes the first time that we went, just because we didn't know how to work the system and our clinical instructor thought that it was best if we learned it ourselves. So she didn't even go. So she just gave us computer access and we had to figure it out ourselves. And obviously like everybody in the hospital is busy. So nobody's going to be sitting there giving you a lesson on the computer system. Yeah, so it took us like, I think it took me four and a half hours. I didn't leave the hospital till like seven or eight o'clock at night. And I was so annoyed just because it took so long. But I mean, I guess that was a good way to learn the system because after that, it didn't take as long, but it still took hours to write stuff down. So you're writing down so much stuff. So then we had to go home and of the medications that our patients were taking, we had to write down everything about the medication so the mechanism of action what classification is the medication you know why is this patient taking this medication um what does this medication do in the body what are we going to expect from it what are the side effects blah 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 so we had to write down all of that and then i think that's all that we had to do i think that's all that we had to do first semester i can't remember because I think our clinical instructor was really slow on introducing care plans to us. So that's another thing you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing care plans. So that's what we would have to do the night before. But then the day after when we came to clinical, that patient that we picked out the night before was going to be our patient. So that's the patient that you're literally going to be taking care of all day. So anything that they need, you're going to be taking their vitals. You're going to be taking... Um, you know, taking care of them if they press their call it button and you're gonna be checking in on them. You wanna perform your head to toe, so that's when you're practicing your head to toe. So you're gonna be assessing the skin, you know, completely, you know, everywhere you wanna assess their skin. But like I said, if they were ambulatory, so if they were able to get up and walk around and they're independent, you obviously don't need to check everything. At the end of the day, you should be an expert on that patient. So if anybody asks you anything about the patient, you should know where they have their IV, where they have any lesions, where they have any incisions, did they have surgery, what's their medical history, what are their medications, like you should be an expert on that patient because you spent all day taking care of them and reading about, you know, their medical history and what led them to them being in the hospital and what the pathophysiology behind their disease and how it progresses and all that. So that's what we did. But in addition to that, the what we would do the first couple of weeks actually i think we only yeah i think we did this the first couple of weeks we kind of followed around the patient care tech so obviously when you're new to nursing school you don't even know how to take vitals i mean now like the thought of taking vitals like do you have to remember that not every hospital has a patient care tech so our patient care techs are the ones that change the patients clean the patients help move the patients and change the bed and wipe their bum if they pee on themselves or they they poop on themselves and literally they do so many things they take vitals of the patients and all that so patient care techs are amazing but obviously now since i'm in my first year of nursing school i'm not following around a patient care tech but that is what we did the first couple of weeks just to learn how to take vitals and cleaning up patients and all that because sometimes nurses do that so 
Not all the time, it also depends on your hospital because not every hospital has a patient care deck, so that will be the job of the nurse. Okay, so yeah, so another thing that we're gonna be doing is completing care plans. So care plans is literally a book of papers that have to do with the patient that you picked out and you have to come up with like nursing diagnosis, you have to come up with um, nursing intervention, nursing goals. Like, I never knew about any of this prior to starting nursing school. Like, I did not know. Like, I you know that patient's chart, but I did not know that nurses literally come up with like diagnosis and like interventions and goals and stuff. And it's not those interventions and those goals aren't related to the medical diagnosis. It's related to like a nursing diagnosis. So basically how the patient copes with it if they're like and if they have like an electrolyte imbalance if they're dehydrated those are going to be our um our diagnoses and then we're going to be do, we're going to have interventions on what we do to help that diagnosis so our doctors treat the medical diagnosis so if they're in for uh what's an example if they're in for congested heart failure the doctor's treating that but the doctor isn't treating all the other side effects that come with it so that's what the nurses do so we come up with goals and we come up with interventions to fix the rest of the smaller problems that the patient has that the doctor doesn't really worry about because he doesn't really need to you know what I mean like that's something that we do so that's kind of what we do so these care plans literally take for freaking ever to finish um, I think that my care plan first semester probably took me like seven, eight hours. Actually, not even just first semester. In general, care plans take like seven or eight hours of you constantly working on it because you like there's just so many things to look at in a patient and you have to look at all their stats and like after you saw them and all that and you have to come up with, okay, what is the priority problem with them that we need to focus on you know what I mean so like if they're dehydrated we need to focus on getting them rehydrated so what can we do obviously we can't prescribe IVs we can't you know do any of that we can't prescribe medication so what can we do to help them not be dehydrated that was foundation so foundations I loved clinicals but I feel like we were also really limited on things that we could do oh actually no we actually got to give we actually got medication checked off. So giving oral medications, we got checked off for that. We also got checked off for injections. That was the most that we did in foundation. So health on the other hand, there was nothing medical, like physically wrong with people in mental health. It's literally all mental. <laughs> so a lot of what we did in mental health was all focused on therapeutic communication. So it's literally, we didn't take any blood pressures. We didn't We didn't do any vitals. We didn't assess their skin. We didn't assess anything that didn't have to do with talking to them. So all we do all day is literally talk to our patients. But the thing is like, you think like therapeutic communication is probably easy. I mean, it's kind of hard just because there's so many rules and so many things that you shouldn't say, so many things that you should say, so many things that, like, questions that have to be rephrased. Like, you can't just ask a question. Stri like, it's so hard to explain. Therapeutic communication is pretty hard. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. So mental health, clinical was like, eh, whatever. It's just talking to people. I mean, no, I didn't enjoy it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna lie. I hated mental health. Mental health, talking to people that were mentally unstable, unstable made me mentally unstable. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I can tell you guys so many stories about experiences at the mental health hospital, at the psych hospital, but that'll be a whole nother video. So now, in adults, we get to give medications, we get to give injections, we get to start an IV, we get to start Foley catheters, we get to take out Foley catheters, we get to give IV medications, we get to do so many things. So there's a little bit more leniency with adult just because foundations is all about getting checked off and learning all these things. And then clinical in adult, which is a year in, I don't know if everybody's names are all the same or if it's just mine, but a year in clinical is gonna be a lot different than first semester just because you've already know how to do all these things, you've already learned about it. So nurses 
love well let me not say that a lot of nurses what i like is finding nurses that are really um open to helping but we don't always get to choose our nurses which kind of suck but if you have like a nurse that's really sweet and like caring and you feel comfortable like it is so freaking awesome to be able to do all these things the only thing is for we don't need to be checked off on ivs like starting an iv but we do need to be checked off on like giving iv medications just because there's so many risk factors with giving iv medications but oh my god this video is 20 minutes long what the hell but yeah so that's kind of what you do in clinical so you get to basically put into practice everything you learned in skills and foundations you get to put it into practice in clinical but of course everybody's school is different so not everybody can probably do the same things but i am down you know i'm all about doing everything as a nursing student practicing everything as a nursing student so by the time you're a nurse you're not like oh i'm new even though i'm a nurse i don't know how to do this you know what i mean like People are going to look at you like, what, like, are you, huh? How did you pass nursing school? So as a nursing school, people love to give you more leniency. And even if you mess up, people are like, it's okay, she's a student. But if you're a nurse and you still haven't done things, which there are people at our school, which our clinical instructor tells us all the time, you know, people get to like senior semester and they still haven't started a Foley. They haven't started an IV. So a clinical is all about jumping for opportunities to try things and to start things which I don't think everybody takes advantage of as much as they can. I mean, I am like a nervous wreck in clinical and I'm like, like this, just trying to do everything. It's really overwhelming, but honestly, there's nothing like putting into practice everything that you're learning and then finding out that, dang, like I can do this. Like I'm meant to be a nurse. Like I'm really learning how to treat patients. You know what I mean? Like when you think of being a nurse, you think about starting IVs and like doing all these things and like you actually get to practice it so clinical now is so much more fun than it was in foundations I mean I still loved it in foundations just because I was so excited to start nursing school and like be in the hospital but clinicals you do you really do get to take care of patients you really do get to touch patients you really do get to do everything that you can obviously that you're allowed to but I just want to say I just want to say when you get to nursing school if you're not already in nursing school or if you are in nursing school and you are too scared to try all these things, you guys, it is so scary, but you have to push yourself to do it. It is insanely scary to think about sticking an IV in someone, like sticking a needle in someone and sticking a catheter and leaving the catheter in there just because you think about all the wrong that can go. But you guys, we're, con we're learning about this in school. This is what we're doing. One day we're gonna be nurses. If we can't practice, like, don't you wanna practice more to get better at it so by the time you're a nurse, you're as good as you can possibly be? Like, I just, I had to vent a little bit because not every everybody's like so scared to do stuff, but this is what we're doing. This is what we're going to school for. So I just wanna say, if you have the opportunity to do this, freaking do it, do it. So, yeah, that's all I really have to say about clinicals right now. Um, uh, this is kind of me just talking out of my behind because I didn't put any structure to this. I kind of just sat here and I'm like, I want to talk about and I want to explain about what to expect from clinicals. But if you guys really do want me to look at my clinical SIDS, like our SIDS or our syllabuses from foundations and from adult and for mental health to tell you guys what we actually do and like have some more structure to everything that we do and everything that we're allowed to do I can so make that video um but this was just things that I kind of think about when I think about clinicals as a nursing student but I can do a more structured video which I probably should start doing but I mean I don't know I'm just here in school waiting to get into class trying to pass some time and talk to my friends Alrighty guys, I think I'm uh, cut out of here now and I'm going to walk over to class. Well, it's probably still too early, but I'm going to go walk into class and talk to my friends who are probably already in there um, and get ready for class. But thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if, if you guys did like this video, please like this video. Comment if you have any recommendations or maybe any um, feedback that you guys want to give me. 
I am open to all um, and any comments, of course, other than hate. Please don't give me hate. Why would you give someone hate? Okay, that's all I'm saying. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys learned something today. And I hope that you guys have a good day. Bye!